Right. Season two is now out. Sorry. Texas Henchman for Hire. Sorry is tangoed to death more times than anyone can count. Arnold is knocked his arsenal and a sincere wish to make amends. Sorry comes back from retirement to cut through the competition with a renewed sense of quititude? Quietude? Whatever. Tracker. Ame and Kage. Throwable darts and Wakazashi. Just 13 damage. Can I practice him if I don't own him? Right, let's go through the updates. So they had a new spy, new catalog, no longer push, push tweak, uh, tweaks, stuff like that. So once Hans is loyal henchman and renowned international assassin, uh, Sori has a crisis of conscience, leading him to retire from his village ways to open a quaint little restaurant in Osaka. After a long period of Japanese, wait, he's Japanese. His name is Sori, dude, and he's an assassin. Oh my of gosh, I'm downloading. I'm downloading. Uh, he's finally back on the field with a new perspective on life and a renewed sense of purpose. An all-new tracker agent that excels a hit-and-run attack to single out and finish targets with Blair. He brings our first... Our first... They type first twice here. First hybrid range and melee weapon in the form of thrown projectiles and a blade. Allowing him to harass targets from afar and close them for a swift elimination. Well, you know how I feel about harassing, so I'm all in. New status effect, Poisoned. A master poisons, crafting a non-lethal recipe that prevents his rivals from healing and spending intel for the duration. Okay. This means that even picking up a spy cash will poison won't heal you at all. In conjunction with the passives, giving him a different advent uh, giving different advent advantages against poisoned foes. He's a true menace for anyone careless enough to end up on the wrong side of his blades. So there's a new catalog. It's a future corporate espionage type catalog. Some new reactive inks. So you can go back and purchase previous season items if you didn't get them, even though it's gone now. Interesting. So the heat changes. Heat is evolving once again from feedback we've been gathering around the release of high alert. While the overall sentiment seems to be trending much closer to a good place for heat, the majority of feedback is still showing you want a bit more consequences. This update will bring you some spicy changes to show how you generate heat. Downing a civilian, staff, or technician will give you one full level of heat. Downing the VIP will give you three full levels of heat. And guards will remain the same, about half a heat level per guard. The DFT change is pretty simple. We want to give value to go back to a lower level, level cover and not encourage staying as a guard the entire match. Wrongly guessing will not carry bigger immediate consequences that will encourage players to better analyze the situation. For the VIP, we want to give more minion to coming across them and giving them a place as a disguise option. With this change, shooting any VIP on site will carry huge potential ramifications that could lead to your immediate defeat. Thanks wisely. Uh, in addition to these changes, we are adding a buffer time, buffer of time to prevent situations where you could hit multiple NPCs at the same time. Single shot leading to a huge amount of heat generated. This should keep things clear from the player perspective. Right, I'll read the rest of that. I want to get through see this eight, what he does. So coded weaponry. Sasori so instantly coats his weapon in poison for a short time. Hitting rivals with weapon applies poison on the victim. You can cancel by pressing F. It's massive. Automatically traces rival he is poisoned. You have seven ammo total. You get five. Oh, that's an extra piece. So 13 on a body, 36 on a head. Oh, and you can hold right click and you stab people. It does 40. So how much does the poison do? I guess it doesn't tell me on the, uh, on the bot. What about this thing? One's act, one's profit. Hmm. He sounds like a normal guy, voice acting wise. Why doesn't he sound Japanese, dude? What the heck? Yeah, I want to be like, Konnichiwa, player son. Arigato for playing me. 
You know there's Spanglish? Mm -hmm. I wonder if there's Japanese glow. So tracks them. So is he... Okay, so the poison doesn't actually do any damage. It just prevents them from there's doing fun. things. An easier exploration. I am thankful. You can coat the blade as well on poison, which is interesting. It's not just your weapon. So then we have his throwable kunais and katana. Oh, so the, oh, that's interesting. So his different weapons change his melee weapon as well. Kunai does seven on a body and 14 ahead. Already out. You get more ammo? You only have four? Hoping not to use them. Does the katana do more damage or something? No, it doesn't. So is the kunai just like a faster thing? Okay. The kunai don't seem as good. It's a little faster, but I think the damage profile isn't enough, personally, for me to use it. And the Yuki and Hikari. Wait, this is very... These are like really small knives. The blade does 10. It's like a kitchen knife. This one fires way faster, but does way less damage. It does the same as the kunai on a body shot though. Oh, you can charge the kunai. So you can do like a burst damage. Oh, you can do like a shotgun. Gotcha. It only consumes one ammo. Okay, that's actually better than I gave it credit for. It's 35. All right. Story answers a stand to throw poison vials. Vials explode on impact creating a zone of poison. It doesn't break them out of cover. It just traces them. I wonder if that works on, uh... What? What's it? Really? Rest for now. One's act. One's I wonder if that works... Like if it tracks the... AI. Instantly throws poison grenade at his feet, creating an area of effect. They receive damage and get poisoned. Alright. Uh deals additional Sasori's blade deals additional damage to poison rivals. One's act opening new doors. Much Not the two tap, maybe. Try this one. If this two taps, it does at least 50. Okay, I think that's a sizable damage increase. And then poison lasts longer. Recover some active cooldown for every damage dealt to a poisoned rival. Oh, that's a good amount. Okay. That's a good amount. Interesting. He seems like a pretty interesting character. Let me see what else is uh changed. Key card spawn chain or spawn economy rebalance. For this season we spent some time rebalancing resources, spawning in a few key ways, and single unified gold in one in mind, slowing down the overall pace of matches and giving some reasons to look around the vault before going to the objective. These changes touch two major components. Keycard spawn changes. Purple keycards will no longer spawn outside of purple rooms. This will prevent early game loots that would dramatically speed up the match. 
A small amount of key cards can now spawn inside the vault. This will give some cha chance for players that do not have much luck in the first phase to scrape back an advantage during the infiltration phase. And the golden key card will now spawn inside the vault, which will prevent players from having a full key card deck before the vault is open. And then ammo spawn changes. Reduced overall ammo overall pool of ammo spawn in all maps and reduced chance for ammo to spawn in public areas. Uh, purple chest tweaks. In season one, we introduced the purple chest spawns in rooms without a vault terminal. While the effect this had on the game was overall beneficial, a side effect of it was that now the purple power up was actually rarer than the gold one during the opening phase. We're now spawning two purple chests in non vault terminal rooms to compensate for this. This also means that while in second one of these rooms, when a solo match will still carry a reward instead of leaving you empty handed, we hope this change will allow for a more interesting use of the field upgrade builds overall. They increase the max level for the game, which involves a new skin. Looks nice. It's green, like poison, I guess. Upped XP values of all sources all around for a smoother progression with more rewards from different lootables and interaction with in-game objectives. Keeping them watch, watch, we'll keep watching the progression rate and player feedback to make this aspect of the game more pleasant for all types of players. Game performance optimizations, they just made the game ideally run better. New graphical options and online hardware detection. They change how the agent select menu works, which you can see right here. Uh, just looks looks nice. You can be more uh, aware of everything. And then they change the ink menu. Okay, so it looks like this. It's nice. And they've increased how many field upgrade decks there are. So now you can have eight instead of four. Slowly. Enhanced controller settings. I don't play on controller, but it is down here. So they have horizontal boost now and vertical boost, which is new. Uh, they've increased melee shot delay. We received quite a bit of feedback on some deadly combinations of high damage weapons with a charged melee. For example, a charged melee from a, with a king shot from ace could be devastating on the receiving party without much chance to counterplay. In this update, we now have a stat that allows us to tweak the delay before firing after a melee on per, on a per weapon basis. We've not yet set different values per weapon in this update, as it's a balancing change that requires a lot of consideration across the board. But you can expect notes on this melee shot delay to appear in balancing patches this season. Reduced cover breadcrumbs duration. We want players to feel confident as they can change cover more often, take full advantage of the key changes in public areas. One part of the risk of changing cover is the duration for which the breadcrumbs left behind when changing cover stay. We've reduced this duration to keep the danger of swapping cover when spies are in the vicinity, but making it less of a long-term clue that a spy was here. That's a nerf to um, have for thing. And fragrant shore tweaks. We've updated fragrant shore to prevent some free skip rooms and green rooms around the level. This made the bounce mat a bit too good of a pick. A couple of key card changes that should slow down matches significantly. Having these green room skips also led to the side effect of having spots on the map with extremely high concentration of combat because multiplayers would head to the same skip location. It's particularly true with the green room and the ground floor of the hotel. Yeah, jumping in through that window, like you could legit. I've had games where I think I've killed six people in that room. Uh, new credits cosmetic in addition to all skins and intro poses that a new agent brings to the table. We're adding more inks to the credits, offering players that can buy or gain in a loot briefcase. We hope you enjoy them. Elite guards presence. The amount of elite guards present before the vault has been reduced from six to five to make them slightly rarer to encounter and make disguising as them all the time a bit riskier. It's not a massive change, but we think it will affect the balancing in a favorable way. Beta Intel XESS to the latest version. Uh, a note on the vault terminal alarm. The season two preview mentioned the removing the vault terminal alarm that was added in season one to increase uncertainty. Uncertainty, uncertainty players will feel when in a purple room with elite guards or the VIP. We, while we still believe that added uncertainty to these rooms is a desirable goal, we don't think the risk of removing the vault terminal alarm and enabling stronger camping is worth it. We will continue to revisit the, this goal to find a solution that gives the result we want about the amount of risk this change brought. We'll keep you updated on our next move on this subject in future patches. 
uh, agents balance. In season two, we were focusing on our first on two main goals, raising agents lagging behind in terms of power and lowering the power level of top performing outliers. In this case, the top performing agent is Larson. As such, some agents might get extremely minimal or no tweaks at all, while others will get an extensive list of changes. This is simply because agents close to the top or right in the middle are left lightly touched as we adjust the rest of the cast around them. We feel this is the best way to reach a more balanced playing field and make more and make better targeted adjustments as the season goes on. Um, as such, some agents might get extremely... I oh know, I already read that. As always, we will monitor how these changes affect the meta and the standing of the cast as we plan our next adjustments during the season. General agent balance. Melee. Slight adjustment to the time it takes to charge a full power melee to make a bit more of a commitment. Fully charged melee time increase from 0.65 to... Point eight. Okay. That does feel a bit noticeable. Uh, Ace. With the introduction of our newest tracker, Sasori, we feel Ace needed a buff to her own tracking ability. We are giving her base expertise a full-fledged trace status effect. UI indicator and distance included. To really help her hone in on her target, we hope she makes a more appealing pick. Explain frames when it's shared for your entire crew. Yo. What's up? The season two update came out. It's good. Oh, nice. The new agent is a poison tracker. Oh, perfect. You're right up your league, Cray. Yes, sir. Uh, weapons. Base Queen of Diamond or base gun. Fire rate 0.7 increased to 0.8 bullets per second. I just realized I have a three day week this week. Honestly, nice. I go? I'm, I'm down for it. Okay, it feels a bit noticeable. King of Diamond, uh, animation adjustment to better fit the reload speed. Okay, that looks nice. I, it did feel a bit clunky before. Expertise, Queen's Gaze. The tracking effect is now a full-fledged trace with precise indicator on the target. Ah, that's actually pretty nice. I don't know if it's going to be enough to... Use more than stacked odds. Stacked odds are just so good. But... I don't know. Maybe. It warranted some test, I think. All right, Cav. Uh, while we're making a single change to Cav, we will be not. It would be wise not to under underestimate its potency. We are lowering the time it takes for Cav to fully charge her special attack, special melee attack. Coupled with the fact that the entire cast has had their charge melee time slightly raised, this makes Cav uniquely positioned to capitalize on her passive strength more often. Cav charge time for full charge melee. Point down from one second to point eight. Okay. That doesn't feel noticeably faster. After the nerfs we gave Chavez in the last few patches, he seems to have settled in a healthier spot as a strong pick, but not an outlier. In this update, we are mostly focused on giving more distinct use cases to the Sentinel versus the Vigilante by making the Vigilante a full fast-firing weapon archetype and balancing the Sentinel around its medium firepower. We are also making a tweak to the toughest nail passive to make it a more viable choice in a com very competitive passive ability landscape. So, Sentinel. Reload time increase from 2.4 to 2.5. Can't really notice, honestly. And the crit damage on fire has been reduced from 2 times to 1.7. Oh, that's a big, that's a big nerf, actually. You can't two-head... Uh, one body anymore with his first gun. You have to two head one body. That's actually quite big. Kava is always taking hits, dude. Uh, Vigilante. Real time reduced from 1.8 to 1.65. That's good. Fire rate increased from 1.8 to 2.3. Holy crap. Damage has been reduced from 20 to 18, 
which is noticeable. Well, you get eight or you get nine bullets now when you pick up ammo. Interesting. Crit damage multiplier reduced from 1.75 to 1.5. Which means if you want to get a kill, you need all four headshots. You hit six body shots, it won't even kill. Oh, no, no, it barely will, actually. If they have no health upgrade. If they... It'll kill the gray health upgrade. Uh, passive one. Tough as nails. Overheal decay speed is now half as fast as before to give more opportunities to leverage it. Health numbers won't aggressively tick anymore like you were taking damage when the overheal decays. Where is it? Here it is. Go around. Condition improved. That's not too bad. I I honestly never use this passive, so I don't actually know how good it was. But it seems like that's a pretty fair time. But again, I don't know if it'll use the the other two are just so good. It's hard to use something other than tough as or endurance strain. I think so good, but maybe. Uh, Hans is getting some significant adjustments in his updates. Spray patterns for his hip fire have been revisited to make them a more efficient and close quarter fighting. More importantly, both of his wave based passives are getting the added benefit of a slow to cause some friction that will keep enemies in Hans' preferred range if you can get the drop on them. We hope these buffs will keep Hans on his upward trajectory. Uh, all weapons. Shriek to spray pattern on the weapons to make close range shots more viable. Oh, it's, it's just it's just a 3x3 three three square now. They're really buffing my man's Hans, dude. I, I don't know if he needs it. Uh, the hook. Fire rate increased from 1.25 to 1.4. Okay. Let's see what the jabs. Oh, that's terrible. Oh my god. Alright, never use his second weapon. Um, his passive. Dreadful Presence. Spies caught in the wave originating from Hans will be slowed for two seconds. That seems pretty good. Oh, that's really good for Hans. Alright, now, now we're cooking. Uh, fear projection. Spies caught inside the wave originating from a rival spy will be slowed for 4.5 seconds. That seems nuts in teams. Don't even try. Dude, that's a long slow. It works in solos too. It counts their own. Known issues. These changes are currently not described in Honda's agent select screen since they came in late. The written details will be added to the game of crash. Alright. Uh, Larson. Larson's been the top performing agent and the highest pick rate for a little while now. Good job, Jake. Aww. What we don't want to lose what makes him unique and interesting is clear that his options are too potent currently compared to the rest of the cast. Our True. goal with this update is, is to tone Larson's oppressiveness down. Give a better use case to his second expertise aside of the exploit he had with it. And make sure he has a better play to fully make use of his very powerful expertise option. So his first weapon, silence. Fire rate has been reduced from six to five point five. That's actually kind of noticeable. But the reload time has been increased from one point from one second to one one point one five. I don't know how that evens out. But. Uh, cadence. This is the big one. <laughs> Magazine side reduced from 18 to 14. Ammo per box and overall pool adjusted with the new mag size. So you okay. get 14 ammo. You don't get double Yeah, you anymore. always have way too much ammo. I can agree with that. Um, yeah, they give JP 14 consecutive fireballs. Fire rate 
uh, reduced from 10.9 or 10 to 9. That's pretty noticeable, actually. And the reload time has been increased from 1.1 to 1.25. Okay, that's good because I think that was his best weapon, his burst. Yes, I agree. I would use his burst. And then his final gun has gotten buffed. His or no, no. His reload time has been increased from 1.2 to 1.25. Interesting. I don't think they're killing him, but I do think he's going to be a lot less. Um, um, a generalist, you know what I mean? He's going to excel at what he's good at, and his weakness is going to be dueling. Because I felt like I could duel with him, which just didn't feel fair compared to, like, what the fact that he could also do everything else. What is this expertise they're talking about? This is just... The thing they wrote is not any of them. Au revoir? None of his expertise are named that. Uh, duration reduced from 7 to 6 seconds. Cooldown extended from 60 seconds to 75. And decreased expertise refund value when cancelled. Delay before immaterial kicks after use... 0.2 to 0.25. I have to imagine they're talking about his first one. Now for the great escape. My name is Jake Young. One, two, three. My name is Jeff. Jake, you should, um... Okay, so they call... Either it's named wrong in-game, or they they typed it wrong. But it's talking about his first one. His first one got some sizable nerfs. It's a second sl it, one second shorter, and it's the cooldown is 15 seconds longer. And the refund you get wow, if you cancel... Wow, really? Yeah, if you, if you cancel the okay, it early... If you cancel it early, his refund is much harsher. All right, I'm a scout main now. It's It's actually over. The character's bonds now. It was so good. I, I, with the uh, gold upgrade, dude, I could sometimes get two TPs per fight. Uh, his second one is Smoke Zone. We've made some changes to Grand Finale to enable a more interesting team play with it, but also just the cheesy strategy of peeking and shooting instantly for any reaction time on the receiving end. We think this new iteration will be more fair, but also more interesting for Larson's team. Larson's allies can now shoot at any time inside the smoke. Shooting immediately breaks the invis effect. A delay of 1.5 seconds of out shooting is necessary to go invis again. Height has been raised to prevent jumping from the top, even in stairs. Cooldown has been increased from 60 seconds to 75. Oh, and the God, delay dude. before zone drops in after press has been reduced from 0.4 seconds to 0.25. Dude, for real, they're, they're killing my boy. I'm so upset. So now you can get, like, multiple invises per fight if you put the zone down, but it's just not instant. Yeah, but I'm talking, like, with his first expertise, you could get multiple invises per fight back in the day. Oh, yeah, like, that one, could, that one could... really got hit. The, and it was just such a shame, because that definitely is what made him good. His final gun still gets double ammo, by the way, from boxes. All right, and then his final uh, invis. Like the first one, though. I hate his, I hate his final gun. Wow, his final in So, duration is reduced from 8 seconds to 6. Cooldowns increase from 60 to 75 seconds. And then, same thing has happened to the first. So the yeah, final his third one might be his third one might be way better. Or the same now. The first, first now. and the, the first and the third are now the same. No, as in like just in terms of power level, I think I think the the third one might be better. Your power level is over nine thousand. Maybe. Ah, uh, funny, funny anime reference. And his pickpocket, which is his by far best ability, uh, adjusted heat per wrong guesses to be higher to fit the new heat. You still will not get one full heat level in one go, though. VAPs also give more heat when pickpocketed to make them a bigger consideration. Bro, Dude, this nerf man really hit the Larson. Yeah, screw that game. I'm done. I quit. <laughs> you haven't tried him yet. <laughs> he's bad. I'm telling you right now, he is bad. Madame Zhao, uh, we are... Or, if I you say her name. We are making some adjustments to Madame Zhu, Zhao. Uh, his weapon, this update to try and make a better case as to why you should use each of her weapon options. The long chin has been the dominant weapon in Arsenal recently, so we are going to. We are making a few tweaks to its damage output and overall feel while giving an overall to the Jean Wu to give more of a light machine gun feel, more present rev up time. 
for the first weapon long or the second the burst oh damage reduced from 12 to 10 per bolt and the refire delay after burst has been reduced from 0.55 to 0.45 it doesn't it doesn't uh three burst anymore to the body which is significant and then our gatling gun starting fire rate reduced from four to three bolts per second Rev up time increased from one second to two seconds, and full rev up fire rate increased from eight to eight point one. Okay. All right, red. Love bite has been the least performant in performant tool in Red's arsenal, and with this update, we're giving it a little bit of love. While it breaks our heart to remove the heart sprayed spray heart shaped spray pattern, it did limit us quite a bit on the balance side. We believe that these tweaks will make Red Shotgun a far more enticing option for close quarter enjoyers. God. Uh, spray, spray tweaks on both Hipfire and ADS for more reliable experience, and the fire rate has been. Uh, let's put an extra decimal. Fire rate has been increased from 0.95 to 1.15. Oh, the, so aiming down really tightens it. That's what she said. <laughs> Got him. Squire, there's a new season update for Deceive, Ethan. Yo. Squire. Out of retirement. <laughs> Squire, after, it's, a pretty it's after a pretty extensive list of changes in the higher alert update, we are leaving Squire mostly untouched for this one. The reason is quite simple. While he's not close to the rest of the cast of analytics, he's still a very strong pick with a big presence. We will continue monitoring Squire's trajectory with all the changes to the rest of the cast, but for now, our boy gets a rest. Uh... So his six sense, rest. his six sense ability, is a real trace with a distance indicator and expected behavior. So now, when someone breaks your cover, instead of just marking them for you, you can now see them through walls. Uh, we are bringing more Love adjustments them. to you, me, in a continuous effort to make her more competitive. We revisit charge times after launch and after further considerations and overall performance analysis. We feel these should be brought back down to make charge shots more accessible. We're also bringing a highly requested change to the Medi field and giving back a bit more gadget cooldown reduction on her base passive to lean more into the gadgeteer aspect of her playstyle. So tactical slingshot, charge time has been reduced from 1.2 to 1 second, and the boosted charge projectile speed to facilitate landing far shots. That's nice. Still need to lead a little bit, but... Experimental slingshot, same thing, 1.2 to 1. I mean, this thing sucks. I would never use this crap. But it got buffed. And the heavy slingshot has been charge time reduced from 1.5 to 1.3. And same thing, boosted charge projectile speed to facilitate landing far shots. Maybe this thing will actually be. Maybe this character will be usable. So you, you need to lead the far one. That's nuts. Uh, Medi field. The bubble now only heals you, me, and her allies. No more seal. Wow, that's a big buff. That is actually a huge buff. Reduction to the time healing stops when receiving damage. So you can't stand in the in the Yumi's heal anymore. It only affects her. Oh, that's weird. And then quick fix gadget reduction, cooldown reduction, uh, increase from fifty percent to sixty five. Oh, gadgets balance. We have some new functions and mechanical changes for some of the gadget roster in this update. The recon drone will now be able to open doors you previously unlocked or have a key card for. That's really strong. This added functionality makes it far more prone to recon tool to look around the map for rivals or vault terminals. The drone can now open unlocked doors. You have key cards for this. Uh, hack trap. Hack trap is now much more reliably useful by triggering on security doors, even if the victim uses a key card. That's also a really big buff. This added reliability means to have we have to lower the time the trace lasts a bit to make it a bit more of a temporary alarm rather than a long form trace that makes the escape very difficult. If these changes make the half track a more popular choice for tracing loadouts or for tracking loadouts and keeping tabs on other spies. Hack trap now gain users now gain three intel every time someone triggers a trap. Dude, wow, that's a really big buff. Hack trap now triggers when a key card is used to open a trap door, but the lower trace time has been Decrease from 20 seconds to 12. I think that is very, very big for this hack trap. Oh man. 
The hollow mimic has played a big role in the body campy meta in teams. With this update, we are fixing the possibility of pushing bodies around a fit. You can no longer push down spies bodies with the mimic. That was funny, dude. The shield brella. We've been take we've been talking for a while about the frustrating nature of the deployed shield brella. There are multiple factors that we believe are core to the problem. The crux of the issue is that the deployed version of the shield is always the best option for a shield user, even in close range, because it enables them to juke around the shield to land shots. True. With this update, the deployed version of the shield now has a very visible weak spot at its base. Any shot, no matter the damage to the weak point, will break the deployed shield instantly. The goal of this is to have a quick response in close course and negate the shield easily while keeping a good option in longer range fights where the weak point is hard to hit. The second part is giving a better use case of the in-hand version of the shield. To do this, we're giving the portable version a bit more HP to make it a good option to disengage while moving away or to take a few hits as you reposition. Watch how effectively the weak point helps the player to deal with the shield and will be able to tweak its different aspects further as needed. The void form now is a visible weak spot, made an instant destruction, and in-hand version has 75 health instead of 50. Shield Brella. Please don't get hurt. So it's this orange thing? Oh wow. That's interesting. There's no doors for me to check here. But... Field upgrades balance. Field agent kit. We're making some adjustments to the field agent kit. With these changes, we're keeping the gold version to be quite playstyle defining, but nerfing slightly other versions that have a bit too much of an impact, especially on high cooldown characters. So is this expertise? Okay, so the reduced wow this this patch just is not good for Larson. Bro, I'm I'm they they nerf the uh the super regen rate play. as well. They nerf super regen rate across the board except for gold. Gold's the only one that didn't get touched. Gray is now 15% down from 20. Green is 20% down from 25. Okay, to be fair, I, I ran gold, so. Blue is 25% down from 30, and purple is 35% down from 40. They're buffing nutritional supplement. So gray, or base food amount has been buffed as well. The base food is now 10 health instead of 8. Gray is 15 instead of 12. Green is 18 instead of 14. Blue is 20 instead of 16. Purple is 25 instead of 20. And gold is 30 instead of 28. And they're, they're changing everything. And then they have a bunch of bug fixes and maps. Changes. Right, that's the whole patch.